Oh boy. This is not the video I really wanted to make. However, on this edition of Check 60 Aviation, I cut my vertical stabilizer skin in half. Why? Coming up. Welcome back to Check 60 Aviation, my friend. It has been a while since we actually went ahead and did the Vans light box up there. And, uh, well, it is that time. We've been a busy beaver. Uh, we had been featured on the local news because I am a student pilot and I am building an airplane. And uh, we had actually started building the RV-10, started with the vertical stabilizer, and then we had a few mishaps after the news crew left. Um, here, in the meantime, check out the news footage. Story is good. I like I like how they did it, but there's a couple of eye roll moments in there. If you can spot the eye roll moments, leave a comment down below. And an Abilene student pilot has started the process of building his own plane completely from scratch. Our Annabelle Teigl talks with this student pilot along with Abilene's chapter president of the Experimental Aircraft Association, learning that he is believed to be the first student in the key city to do this. Precision, the right tools, and a whole lot of patience. These are things Raymond Jordan is planning to use every day in his warehouse with a lofty goal in mind. I've always wanted to own an airplane. Why not build one? Now this may look like just a typical warehouse for Raymond Jordan to build in, but he's working on putting together pieces like this so that soon an entire airplane tail will be inside. So I get to customize it. This 54-year-old student pilot started aviation school in 1994. My son was born and I had to put flying on the shelf for a number of years, but never lost my love. I never lost my love of flying. Jorn says building this plane, an RV-10, would be one-third of the cost of buying one. It is their only four-seat aircraft in their entire fleet. Perfect for him, his wife, and his two daughters. Once the airplane tail is complete, he will move this project across the street, where he plans to build a larger space. This will be 2.0 on, and on a much bigger scale. Chapter president of the EAA Chapter 471 here in Abilene, Jeff Clement, says he too built a plane as a student pilot. Let me clarify, it's not nearly the undertaking that, that uh, Raymond's taking on. It's, this is a lot bigger project than what I had. And Clement says even though many pilots build planes, it's more rare for a student to do it. It's unique here. Let's put it that way. It is unique in Apple. This is so exciting. I'm actually starting on the RV-10. George will be documenting this process on his YouTube channel, even though he doesn't know how long it will take. What's your goal? To get it done. <laughs> and he says he's determined to get his flight certification before it's built. In Abilene, Annabelle Tuggle, KRBC, Abilene Circle News. All right, so then after we got done, uh, got done with the beginning steps, this that was actually my second attempt. And we, yeah, I had my daughter Serena out here helping me dimple the skin for the vertical stabilizer. And then this happened. Yep, that's right. We joined the Double Dimple Club. And not only that, but I had drilled the wrong holes in the vertical stabilizer spar cap. Well, not the spar cap, but the, um, the spar stiffener. So yeah, that, that meant that I needed to start completely over from scratch. This'll be attempt number three, and let's just cross our fingers here that the saying about the third time will hold true. So let's get to work.
All right, so now that most of the screws are out, let's see what's behind door number one. And good job as usual, Vans, on packing. Um, you have definitely stepped up your crating game a lot since I got the original crate. Because at that time, they used staples to hold everything in. And, well, let's just say it was not a good idea. All right, so now that we got it all out of the box, let's go ahead and start unwrapping it. Um, I did get new spark caps and the new, and new stiffener. Uh, so yeah, we are basically starting this section over completely from scratch. So yeah, let's go ahead and, oh boy. <laughs> where, where did they start? I'm like, uh, okay. I think they started up here wrapping. Oh, it's almost like being, being a little kid at Christmas, I don't know. But, uh, maybe we'll just go ahead and get a blade and, and or not. I think, I think, I, I think my finger will work. Oh, or better yet. Yep, yep, up oh, here we go. That's where they stopped wrapping. All right, we're golden now. They're clear to unwrap. of the spar cap uh, actually not the spar caps there's well the spar caps too there's portions of the spar stiffener that are drilled into the spar web this is the web and over here is the flange so uh, you are drilling it from through the spar flange as well into the um, the spar caps, but uh, just to be consistent, I mean the the ultimate goal is to build a show quality plane, one that would be a contender for a Lindy at Oshkosh or even Sun and Fun. But uh, we'll see if that we can make that happen. So far. Eh. But, like with anything, you have to see it in here before you can see it through here. So, yes, we're 1014. There. Now, I will be marking which holes to be drilling this time, instead of drilling these. Or even no these are the three that I drilled last time uh, you don't want to drill these holes no 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 uh, I believe it's these two holes however I will be checking the plans yes do read through the plans and do your best not to skip steps uh, even though Vans is shipping the RV 10 kits with final sized holes 
and by now they should have run through all of their final size, their uh, uh, not final sized whole parts. Um, it's always a good idea just to check and make sure that the parts are match drilled. Uh, you do that by taking a drill bit and or taking a drill bit and inserting it in the hole. If it goes through, it's final sized. And no match drilling is required. So even though your plans may or may not say match drill, match drilling will not be required. So therefore, this process will be a lot quicker than some of my predecessors, like say, Plain Lady, you know, Christine and Tyler, uh, or even Gil from Build Fly Go. So one of the things that I want to let everyone know about here is that I am so thankful and grateful for everyone that watches these videos that I put up on YouTube for you guys and other platforms. And uh, to help support the channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It does help the channel. Another way that you can support our work here at Check 6 Aviation is by hit, smashing that thumbs up. It tells the YouTube algorithm that this content needs to be shared a little bit more. And the more it sh is shared, the more subscribers I can get and the more I can go ahead and afford to make these videos because I mean let's face it time is money but uh, enough of that um, I did want to also mention that um, I had intentionally uh, uh, the original intention was to put everything for the vertical stab in one giant video well I got to editing it down and I saw just how giant a video it was and I'm like I don't think everyone's gonna want to sit around for a couple hours just to watch me put together a vertical stab uh, maybe 15 20 30 minute blocks maybe but uh, not that long so this is actually part one we're gonna be part you know it's gonna be part one of several but um, yeah uh, the reason why I cut my vertical stabilizer skin in half is well purely for storage you see in the background that I don't have a whole lot of storage but or a lot of, a lot of space and so yeah that's the reason all right so the step that I just completed was what Annabelle Tuggle from KTV or KTAB saw me do and that's why she thought I was building this from scratch apparently that's the only explanation I can think of but uh, so these are the spar caps and what they will be you know I'll go ahead and take out the area that I just marked because it is not needed it will interfere with some of the thing, uh, components for the spar and they go right in here and get match get these actually do get mash drilled so there will be some drilling that you will need to do to complete um, because as you can see there are absolutely no holes in here so you will need to go ahead and put holes in here according to where these holes are um, some of the holes you won't need to do at least not right away they will be called out in a different in a later step like these two holes here you can forget about them for right now um, but the rest of them yeah uh, especially in here and all the way up as far as they will go no, I, did, I did miss this but that's okay um, so now it's over to the bandsaw uh, now if you're not very good with a bandsaw I would suggest that you cut just outside the line and use like a a file or even a belt sander to go the rest of the way you can also use one of these uh, three inch wheels um, 
As a matter of fact, I will use a three inch wheel on the corners, the 3M wheel that is, to, because that's always a good idea. You want to you run around off your corners. If you ever happen to have your plane looked at by an AMP, I don't know why you would, especially on an experimental home built. Well, if, if you're not the one that has the, the repairman certificate, then, then I can see you not, you, know, you taking it to an AMP, uh, an airplane mechanic. Um, but otherwise, that's another reason to go experimental is because <laughs> if you built it, the, the idea with the FAA is that if you built it, you should know every rivet and you should be able to fix your own airplane. And that's it, it, exactly what I intend to do. So, get all this off. But uh, as far as the rounded corners, if you ever have an AMP look at your airplane, you don't want him cutting himself on sharp edges. So, there's that. And as always, you definitely want to wear hearing protection when using bandsaw with metal because this gets loud. Another way that you can support Check 6 Aviation is if you should decide that this is something that you might want to explore for yourself and actually buy a kit from Vans Aircraft, down in the description below is my builder number when you get your empennage kit, there will be a how did you hear about us form. Fill that out with my builder number. Send it back to Vans. Vans Aircraft sends me $100 just to say thank you for the, uh, the referral. And it doesn't cost you any more out of pocket than you've already put in to your own project. So thank you for watching once again. Now back to the video. All right, now that I have the spark caps cut to shape, it will go, like for example, this one will go in here, over here, because you want the, the longer flange on the spark caps to be on against the, the web of the main spar, the vertical, the horizontal, yeah, vertical stabilizer spar. Uh, you will want to have them flush against here and then you can begin drilling out the holes in the flange and also the, the, web, the, the holes in the web here. Um, and then Clico as you go along using the number 30 Clicos, and you will use the number 30 drill bit here. Don't worry about this one here, it says, but you'll use the number 30 here, and the number 40 here. But first, I am going to deburr right in here. I did get a little bit with the belt sander, but uh, not over here. It's rather difficult to get in with the belt sander right like that. So, got a one inch wheel, or at least what's left of a one inch wheel. And we're going to Want to get a sneak peek of what we're doing before we post a video? Then by all means, go over to our Instagram feed and hit that subscribe button over there too. Okay, so now that I've got these deburred, I, I still have to take off the corners. I will do that before I am ready to prime. But for right now, I just want to go ahead and get these ready to um, ready to, to get drilled uh, so let's see we'll go ahead and position this put this into place get it nice and flush and then we'll take 
these clamp Clecos. And put them in the corners. Put them on the, on the flange. Plus, yep, 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 right like that, right there. And so that we'll go ahead and keep it in place. You see, it's it's kind of bending here, so we don't want that. So we will go ahead and just force it into place. Put that there. And then the rest should be okay. But uh, go ahead and put this in place. Now, when I first looked at these, uh, I thought that these edges needed to go together, that it formed like a V. And no, that is not the case. Because, like I said, there's there's some things, some areas that need to be, need some clearance, like right here, for rivets. And if I, first of all, if I had a V, if these were shaped in a V, you know, positioned in a V, I'd be blocking rivet holes, screw holes, whatever. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, and also, if I did not, Cut away what I did on the bandsaw. Be blocking these outside outer holes here. We don't want that. Now, in the process of putting these clamp clecos on, uh, I discovered, with a little bit of trial and error, that it is better to put them on to where the uh, the spring is on the inside of the spar. The reason for that is to give me proper clearance, I guess you'd say, so I'm not running into issues when I start drilling the holes on the spar flange. Um, here you'll see me selecting a proper drill bit. It says to use a 3 16 inch drill bit on the web. Um, you can get away with using a regular drill bit that's probably made for wood that you'd pick up at your local big box home improvement store. That's what these are. However, for the large part, um, for drilling on aluminum, especially in aircraft aluminum, um, you would probably would want to invest in some carbide tip uh, or carbide drill bits because that is what I have for the number 30 and number 40 and as far as uh, and a, a few other numbers uh, already uh, that I purchased from Cleveland Aircraft Tool uh, from, as part of their RV10 Builders Kit recommended tool list. Now Vans Aircraft does put together a recommended tool list to uh, amass uh, or assemble uh, your project when you get it. Um, you'll find going through the process of building an airplane that there's going to be tools that aren't on that list that you're going to want and that will come in very handy. A prime example will be a 90 degree drill bit set where you attach this, uh, this attachment to your drill and it turns a shaft and drills in tight spaces for you at a 90 degree angle from the drill that you're holding. So just a word of, of advice, uh, reach out to me with any comments or questions. I love to answer and interact with everyone that watches these videos. All right, so with all of the 1 8 inch drill uh, holes uh, made into the spar caps, it is time to do the flanges for the number 40. So for that, instead of going to the drill press, I figure I can do it faster and just as well with the handheld drill. So 
let's go ahead and get that done. Now, before I get a bunch of comments saying, oh, you should have used your drill press. You've got it right in back of you. Pipe down, folks. I did pick up a few tricks in watching other builders, namely Christine and Tyler Russell from Plain Lady. Uh, one of their tricks was that they used the reflection off of their drill bit to kind of help them get a straight drill. If the drill bit that you're seeing in the reflection lines up perfectly with the drill bit itself, as in you don't see any side-to-side -side movement, then you're pretty straight. And that's the technique that I'm using here. All right, both sides are done now. I didn't show me doing both sides because, well, I was rather repetitive, I thought. So, of course, anytime you drill, you clico as you're drill, you're, you clico along as you're drilling. Uh, I did every second hole once I got to the areas where I could not clico to the, the, um, the web of the spar. Uh, and so now I have to, I get to take it all out again and Deeper. Now the reason why you deburr is because if not only do not only will the part sit flush against the part that you're attaching it to, but there's also a greater chance that not only can someone cut themselves on a burr, but there's a greater chance for cracking along that hole if you do not deburr. So that is what I am conscious about and taking care of here and heading them off at the pass. All right, so because of me making some mistakes the last go around, I have gone ahead and really, um, notated on the uh, on the, the spar flange doubler here where, what I'm supposed to do and where like for example uh, last time I accidentally drilled these three holes to uh, 3 16 and it was actually these two holes that I was supposed to drill with a 3 16 inch uh, drill bit so I am making sure that I do not foul up like that again I am actually going to get through this all the way to the complete assembly <laughs> this time this is getting done uh, yes so I am pretty confident in everything that I've got to do um, as you see I've gone ahead and click code I've deburred everything it's looking good um, all you need is just a couple of uh, a couple of twists with this and it should be good. You can go ahead and run your fingers over it if you don't feel any bump, any anything catching, like kind of like there, but not really. Uh, that might just be, well, you know what? I'm going to redo this one just a hair. You don't want to do it too much because this will actually countersink. So yeah, all right. So we'll go ahead and get this 3 16th inch bit done. And we'll be on our way. So I'm using the not only the hole itself but also the the reflection off of the metal to kind of gauge whether or not I am perpendicular One, two, 
Attach bolt holes to the VS-1003 rear spar. The VS-1008 spar, rear spar doubler. And the VS-1014 left and right spar caps. Don't final... Okay, so I will be final size drilling these to a uh, number 12. But I don't do that yet because that is done when the vertical stabilizer is fitted to the tail cone. So okay, so there's there's some there's some stuff that some steps that you won't do that they want you to do, but not yet. So go we'll get that. Um, step five, which. The final size drill number nine, final drill number 19, the four holes common to the bottom rudder hinge bracket. So that is these four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Yes, yes, yes. The bottom rudder hinge bracket. Or is it these four? All right, so now it says to machine countersink the four spar doubler holes common to the bottom rudder hinge bracket. So, and I'm supposed to machine them for an AN509 screw. Uh, which is what, uh, this one. This is why you keep your inventory list, because I actually reference to the inventory list to see which bag the AN509 screws were in. Okay, so it's these actually. These are the screws. Not the bigger ones. So, same process as before. All right, so what you've just witnessed is the completion of, well, not really the completion, that's, that's in a later video where we rivet everything together, but at least the preparing, uh, the preparation, <laughs> preparing, new word, uh, the preparation for the vertical stabilizer main spar. In the next video, we'll go ahead and cover the, uh, the skeleton and uh, in, in either, the, the skeleton doesn't take that long. So it might be where we're getting ready to assemble everything together. And hopefully, depending upon how much time, uh, how much uh, footage I have, complete the vertical stabilizer in the next video. We'll see, fingers crossed. 
But anywho, so I, I gotta say, um, sorry about the stabilization there. I'm not using my GoPro, I'm using my iPhone for this video, for this portion of the video, brother. But uh, I, gotta, I gotta give a shout out to Vans Aircraft and the community. All throughout this build process, you guys have been absolutely awesome. Any question that I've had, all I have to do is call up uh, the Vans Aircraft Builder Support Line uh, whenever they're in service or shoot them an email no matter what time of day or night it is they'll get back to you I promise uh, like I've said before earlier in the video if you're still watching 30 minutes in if you ever decide that you might want to build your own aircraft it is completely simple well it's not simple but it is completely possible um, it's literally like putting together ikea furniture the plans go ahead and tell you take this part do this with it and attach it to uh, part b um there's a whole bunch of other stuff that will go into the decision making on what uh you want to ultimately do with your aircraft but i i gotta tell you, i gotta tell you especially after taking a ride in one at oshkosh last year in 2022 this has been a humongously fulfilling section to get done because it is the very first one that um or at least the one that most people do first uh i actually kind of mixed it up a little bit uh while i was waiting for parts i think i mentioned that earlier in this video but uh, yeah, so like, share, subscribe, and please, by all means, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And by all means, if, uh, if you care to support the channel and want to get something out of it, then get some merch. Until next time, remember this time, and always check your six. Peace.